Mm -hmm. Call the seventh regular uh, meeting of the Common Council order. City Clerk Richards, would you please call the roll? Bauman? Here. Berg. Here. Eberg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Graf? Here. Kittleson? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Sagali? Here. Stefan? Here. Susha? Here. Van Akron? Here. And Vanderweel? Here. 16 present. Quorum present. Uh, approval of the minutes. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the minutes of the previous Common Council meeting be writ uh, approved as written in the record. Second. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion? If not, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Pledge of Allegiance. I'd ask uh, Alderman Kittleson to please uh, join us. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I know I did. Thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Go have to try. Confirmation of mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. It's right there, Steve, underneath your book. Hereby right submit the following appointments for your consideration to the Mayor's International Committee, Albert Brizov, Valeria Brizov, Gene Kittleson, and Yolanda Graf, appointed to 62005, terms expire 430.06, signed by the mayor. Thank you, Attorney McLean. I'd ask for a motion to confirm the appointments. So moved. Motion to second. Second. There's a motion to second. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Public mm -hmm. forum, City Clerk Richards. Uh, yes, first on the list would be um, Susan Hundley. Susan, can I get your home address, please? Okay, and you will have five minutes. I'm sorry. You're welcome. Thank you, Mayor Perez and Council for allowing me this opportunity tonight to speak. Um, it's probably going to be brief because I am speaking on um, the pluses of a room tax commission, and I just attended a meeting to get the information, so I do not have a prepared speech. Um, but there are a couple points I do think are important, and, and I would like to make them. One is um, maybe some of you are as confused as I is that within five weeks, the Sheboygan Press changed their opinion on the room tax. They wrote a very nice editorial. Well, I thought it was nice because it was in favor of a room tax commission. And then this Sunday they wrote um, an article about, um, actually it was to do with the chamber contract with room tax, but they did include um, their opinion on a room tax commission, which had changed. But I took the initiative to call Mike Knuth, the editor, and he did explain to me that it wasn't a flip-flop, per se. They, uh, and we had a long discussion, and I think we both got a lot out of it. And some of the points that I made to him, I would like to share with you. But I will speak on this another time when I can get it in, in a little bit better uh, format. And one thing I would like to say is um, I definitely respect um, Alterman Groth. And I respect your opinion that you do not see the uh, value of a tourism commission. I was on the CVB advisory board with you for many years. And um, I'm not trying to change anybody's mind. But until somebody can give me a really good reason, I, my mind is not being changed either. So um, I will respectfully disagree with people who I certainly will not tell you that your opinion is not valid. And uh, one thing that uh, when I was talking to Mr. Knuth, I said an interesting point is when I did research, I didn't just come up with this idea one day that, hey, let's have a room tax commission. I started finding out that it worked in others, <coughs> other communities. One interesting point is there has never been a community that did disband a commission. It is formed by the mayor. It's approved by the common council. It's on a yearly basis. If this is a bad thing, why do communities, once they initiate it, have it? The council, you would not lose control 
if you are disappointed or upset with somebody on this commission, you just do not renew that person after a year. So I thought that was a big plus. So far, I've only been able to find pluses for tourism commissions. For one thing, it does have lodging representation. It has tourism representation. There is no uh, pain of these people. It's like any other commission. I know I've heard certain older persons say they really do not like another layer of government added. But I've also heard these same Alter persons, when you speak of the police station, say they want input from the police on the location because they consider them the experts. Well, in a way that's contradictory to what I'm asking. I'm asking for input from people in lodging, tourism, to have some input on how room tax is spent. We are the only people that do collect this money. We have very intimate relationship with the people giving this many money to the city of Sheboygan, and I think we have a huge vested interest of how successful the money is used in Sheboygan. There's no lining our pockets with it. Um, I'm not going to comment on, um, I think City Attorney McLean has explained to you several times what the state statute allows um, the city to do. You can either, actually, uh, he, he has made the point that what you're doing now is you're acting as a room tax commission. Because the state statute says in order to directly, um, you can either spend the money directly, that would mean pull it in the house, tell you the truth, that has always been our worst nightmare. <laughs> so we've always thought, okay, let's leave it with the experts, the CVB, and the chamber should really be working through a tourism commission. That's, that's what you need. You really need a tourism commission. Now I know they say that they have representation from lodging, have throughout the years, but if it is a CVB advisory board, that is not the same as a tourism commission. It is after the fact. The money has been spent and then they're told. Where a commission, or Kohler calls their commission a tourism committee. And as you know, Kohler is very, very successful at promoting Kohler. So I think that's a really good uh, point. Like I said, I really would like some time to put my comments together rather than bore you with fragmented um, comments. And um, just to skip <laughs> to a different topic, and I know none of you can believe I have anything on my mind besides room tax, but <laughs> there was an editorial also today. Excuse and me, I, Susan? Uh, my sorry. time's up. Okay, I won't discuss it. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Um, next on the list is August Marganeau. And August, could you give me your home address, please? 1610 North 11th Street in Sheboygan. North 11th? Yes. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. Uh, my name is August Marganeau, and I, I want to thank Mayor Perez and all the, all the persons here today for this chance to talk. I represent the two or 40 people that be behind me from Neighbors Against Drugs. And the reason I'm here tonight is to speak on Article Number 752, which we're going to address here tonight, and to give a little background on how we got to Article 752. Um, we have drug dealers in Sheboygan, and we have frustrated neighbors that didn't know how to handle it. So when, two years ago when NAD got organized, one of our main things was to look at what we could do, and we provided a roadmap for working with those people in those neighborhoods who wanted to rid themselves of the drug dealers. And we've, to date, if you watched the parade yesterday, we had a sign on one of our vehicles that we've gotten rid of 59 drug houses in Sheboygan, and we've cleaned out 15 neighborhoods. That being, we wanted to take another step and provide a sign for those neighborhoods where we've declared victory that would be put up on existing polls uh, stating that drug dealing is not tolerated in this neighborhood, and then our logo would be inserted, and to report suspected drug dealing called 459-3341. Most of those neighbors in those neighborhoods already know because they've worked with us, and if they hadn't kept the drug dealers and uh, gotten a word to us, we could not have helped clean out those neighborhoods. Now, uh, at the last Public Protection and Safety Committee, this request was put up to have those signs put up, and it was denied. And that's the reason we're going to 752. Now, I want to address two things that were brought up in that meeting. One was there was no cost estimate. And so we're talking about 15 signs to date, and hopefully another 15 in the future. I don't know how the unions work here in Sheboygan, but if need be, we'll put them up ourselves. So maybe we can address that cost issue there. The other thing was uh, something was brought up it said it may portray a negative image to the city tourists and, uh, and uh, visitors. And I'll address the word may because it means that we don't know for sure, but it's a question that we have to address. 
And I'm going to answer it in this way. When we work in, the, in these neighborhoods, we go out and we do surveys and we talk to people, we let them know where the suspected drug houses are. And at the end, we talk to them, can we put a sign in front of your house, an anti-drug sign, and everyone would get one except the suspected drug house. And occasionally we run into people who are selling their home or going to sell their home and we run into a problem. How is that going to affect people who are going to look at my home? And it, it's a valid reason. You know, there's money involved. And we will honor their request one way or the other. But one of the things we propose to them is to put themselves in the place of a person who's coming to look at that house. Or in the case of these signs, coming to look at a community. Are they going into a neighborhood? They can't control the fact that there's drug dealers there. But they're going into a neighborhood where the people are going to do something about it. And I think that's a big plus. And for the most part, those people have on their own made a decision to let us put those signs up. Now, right now in the city of Sheboygan, we do put up a lot of signs that are for protecting our children. There's some that limit the, the speed of vehicles near schools or no right turn on red when children are present, presented or present. And also signs that say there's a deaf child in the area. It shows that this city is concerned about safety and the safety of its children. Well, these signs are against the drugs, and we're looking at the safety of everybody because the drugs are here. We're talking about just on Erie Avenue, a big methamphetamine house. You'd think by now these people would know that this is an anti-drug committee, but we've got to put up signs to do that. And so what we're looking for you to be is a part of our team. We've got courageous citizens who are working with us. We provided the roadmap. They provided the drug diaries. And like I say, we've got 59 drug houses out of Sheboygan to date. Right now, before we put up these signs, we're coming to you because you're our next step. And uh, we're asking that you be a part of our team and help us by putting those, those signs up only in, in community neighborhoods that have taken the courageous act of getting drug dealers out of their neighborhood and protecting their kids and their families. Thank you. Thank you, August. Next on the list is Michael Schrader. Michael, could you come up to the mic, please? <laughs> Here's the sign. And I need your address, Mike. I live at 3920 South 15th Street. South 15th? South 15th. Okay. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. You're welcome. Your Honor, members of the Mayor uh, of, the, of the Common Council, um, I've had the unique uh, privilege of being involved with Neighbors Against Drugs as a volunteer since its very inception two years ago. Um, some of you are supportive of our efforts. And some of you are not, yes. some of our leaders are not, and some of whom are in this chamber this evening. And I guess I'd like to address that real briefly with you. Um, it has been said that perhaps the sign, it's not that large, this sign might lend a negative connotation to visitors of our city. Well, let me tell you what might be negative. Negative might be hearing from a fellow citizen that uh, she won't let her children out in the, in the sidewalks at night because of the drug and, and gang uh, traffic. Negative might be uh, hearing from a citizen that perhaps uh, they would want to move the first opportunity they had because of the drugs and the illegal uh, gang activity and all the other things going on in the neighborhood. Maybe being negative is finding out that there is yet another drug house after closing one down and maybe another one com coming up. Negative might be perhaps uh, hearing about a, uh, a meth lab by accident in our, com in our community. And for those of you who don't fully believe in what we're doing or don't fully support what we are doing, I invite you down to step down from the ivory tower and perhaps spend an hour or two with one of these volunteers walking the once proud streets of our city and discover for yourselves what has happened. It's shocking. These efforts of ours and uh, your fellow citizens has not cost the city a plug nickel. We've done it through fundraising efforts on our part and through contributions to uh, other citizens who support uh, our involvement. We ask that you uh, some of you perhaps reassess the Public Protection and Safety Committee uh, decision to not allow this sign uh, in those neighborhoods that, that want drugs kept out of the neighborhood. And, and for heaven's sakes, who wouldn't? Thanks for your time. Thank you, Michael. 
That's it. Thank you very much. Next we have mayor's comment and since this was put on the agenda I've learned that it would be best for me that when I am going to, to uh, make some comments that I'd be more specific uh, because of the open meetings law. There needs to be, a, I need to do a better job of giving notice uh, on the agenda both to the common council and the community. So I am going to skip that and the comments that I had to make I will either make them at another time or just forward an email to you. and. Uh, or, or a letter in the instance where some aldermen don't have uh, email. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we move on to a hearing. Uh, she didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Alderman Sigali. Thank you. I, I buzzed in at the wrong time. Excuse me. It's at the wrong time for what? I'm, I want to be, uh, pull a document for it, but I'll do it after the hearing. It's, we you want to do it now before the hearing? Uh, after go, the hearing, probably. Yeah, we need to do it after the hearing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank That's you. Okay. Thank you. There's a hearing tonight to amend the zoning map to change the use classification of property at 1515 Ontario Avenue from Class NR neighborhood residential to Class NO neighborhood classification. I'm, so, I'm sorry, what? 515, what did I say? 1515, I stand corrected. 515. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that, Oldenburg? I didn't hear you, sir. I said you were only 10 blocks off. That's an unsolicited uh, remark, Alderman Berg. Please refrain from that comment. Is there anyone that would like to speak uh, on this hearing? Is there anyone that would like to speak on the hearing? Yes, sir. If you would please step to the podium. N not in front of the... Uh, <coughs> Please go around, sir. Council floor. Sir, can I get your name, please? Uh, could you repeat it again? I couldn't hear. How do you spell the last name? T H I E M E. And your address? 509, Ontario. Ontario? Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, I guess my only concern. So obviously, I live right next door to this property. Uh, Jacobson Rost is an excellent neighbor. I have no problem with them. My only concern is in the future, I was wondering if they would ever move on, uh, what that would do to my property value and what might happen. My other concerns are any uh, noise or light pollution that I might get if they decide to install a big security light at the back door or anything or how that could be addressed. I have no idea how that's, what you do to address concerns like that or if they put an air conditioning unit next to my house. Just wondering how that's covered, if that's done in, through this zoning or if that's gonna change anything. Mr. Sokolowski, would you like to address that please? <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor, Council. Um, basically what we have here tonight is we're taking a look at uh, rezoning the property at 515 Ontario Avenue from neighborhood residential and neighborhood office. Presently, neighborhood residential allows for single families, duplexes, um, some institutional uses like churches, things like that. What we're doing tonight is allowing Jacobson and Ross the opportunity to potentially make an application to expand their business to this particular property we're looking at. So what would happen in this particular case, should the Common Council approve the rezone to neighborhood office, then what would happen is the next step in this is that they would have to go through a site plan or conditional use permit before the plan commission. And typically those issues such as noise, lighting, um, more of the site planning issues are addressed at that point in time. So, so if the council approves this, they still have to go through the site plan process for an approval. This doesn't approve the use. This just approves the, a new designation. And as far as the types of uses that can now go in there, if the council approves this to a neighborhood office, you're talking uh, uses such as um, professional services, um, which are uh, clinics, doctor's office, real estate, uh, retail, um, commercial and indoor attainment, taverns, 
restaurants. So, so the use has an effect on the neighborhood and, and should they move, those other uses, would, uh, someone would have to come in again and apply for a site plan or a conditional use permit to change that use from Jacobson Ross to, say, Steve's Restaurant or something to that effect. Okay. Does that answer your question, sir? Uh, thank you. Are you done speaking? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council regarding the hearing? Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. Please step up. Can I'm Craig I Jacobson. A Trig? My name is Craig Jacobson, and I'm with Jacobson Rasta. And your address, Trig? 529 Ontario Avenue. Thank you. I uh, just want to let the council know that uh, I have been a uh, citizen of Sheboygan all my life. Uh, we have currently been at the location uh, almost 50 years. Um, we have really tried to go out of our way to be a good neighbor, provide good jobs, uh, and certainly deal with issues as they have come up. Um, I think it would certainly be our intention as a good neighbor to continue to be a good neighbor, to address parking issues where they come up, uh, light issues where they might come up, or sound issues. Um, our intention really is to beautify the neighborhood, to fix up old houses, um, give them a second life, and uh, to provide good jobs, and uh, to do what we can for the community. So I think um, uh, certainly would wish for your support in, in our continued growth, and uh, let you know that we certainly do appreciate all that you continue to do for the city. Thanks much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? Are we allowed to let him follow up? Please, sir. Thanks. I just want to tell the council I, I am in favor of Jacobson doing this, too. I'm not opposed to it. I just express concerns about how it's done. So, Thank you thanks. very much, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? Is there anyone else? Not? Alder McGraw? Your Honor, I'll move that the hearing be closed. There's motions or second? Second. second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Thank you. Alderman Sigali. <laughs> <laughs> now we can do it. Six sixty nine would like uh, it's been requested to be pulled forward. What is it? Well, page nine, six sixty nine. Yeah, she's on. I'm sorry, I took it off. Okay. Okay, six sixty nine. Is there any objection pulling forward? If not. Is there a motion? Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to make a motion that uh, General Ordinance Number 1505 be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to make an amendment to this ordinance. I would like to have deleted uh, me uh, in any commercial zoning district, I would like to have it state any location within the city of Sheboygan limits. So it would read uh, prohibiting, encouraging in the congregating of seagulls by feeding or any other means in any location within the city of, I'm sorry, within the city of Sheboygan limits. Second. There's a motion and a second to amend accordingly under discussion. Alderman Ret Retke. Thank you, Your Honor. When I had talked to City Attorney Steve McLean about this original ordinance before we uh, came up with this in committee, we decided it was probably best to just put it to the area um, right around the uh, <clears throat> Washington Square uh, Shopping Center for the simple reason being that that might be enforceable, but to enforce it throughout the entire city would be totally foolish because how are you going to stop somebody from feeding the birds in their backyard, the seagulls swooping down? I mean, there's just <clears throat> no way we can enforce such a law. What we're really telling people is you can't feed the birds in your backyard anymore is, is the way 
I would understand that to read. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rackney. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I agree with what Alderman Rackney was saying, and I would like uh, the city attorney to to express your concerns about making it no feeding all city wide. Attorney McLean. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I did express that concern at the uh, Public Protection Safety Committee meeting when this was first discussed. I felt that, uh, uh, number one, I, I think you ought to address, to the extent you want to address the issue, address the issue that's currently before you. If, if the issue becomes a larger one, I, I could see perhaps expanding the area that you're covering, but uh, as Alderman Radke said and, uh, and Alderman Vanderweel, uh, there, are, you know, there may be legitimate feeding of seagulls in, uh, in, in uh, people's yards or, or whatever that it really doesn't create a problem. You know, I think you ought to try to focus in on the problem area and address that and to, uh, you know, potentially raise an issue where one neighbor in, on the north side of town in a residential neighborhood uh, doesn't like their neighbor or something. They call the police because uh, they put out some peanuts for the squirrels or something and, and the seagulls uh, happen to get them and, uh, and argue that, well, there's two seagulls there and they're congregating. Uh, um, I just, I think it makes most sense to limit your focus to the extent you can. If it becomes a bigger problem, uh, address that. But uh, I'm not, generally not in favor of, you know, attacking one problem with kind of a sledgehammer that may, uh, may prevent some other protected activity that, that's perfectly, you know, not a problem or, uh, um, uh, it's perfectly uh, valid. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Zagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to ask for a suspension of rules and have the floor open so that Mr. Ben Nelson, who is here from the Department of Agriculture, Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, has a time to speak, please. There's no need to suspend the rules. We'll just okay. mo make a motion to open the floor. Okay. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Is uh, the gentleman here? Yes, sir, can I get your name, please? Sir, my name is Ben Nelson. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'm here and talk to people. And Marge has asked me to be here to hopefully answer any questions and give some uh, a different opinion of uh, the gulf feeding issue here in the city of Sheboygan. Um, normally, uh, basically what my title is, is I'm a wildlife specialist with the U.S. Department of Agriculture and I specialize with nuisance wildlife, particularly birds, um, and uh, I've actually visited the site over at Washington Square and uh, it was at the time that I was there, it was my recommendation to uh, the older people that were there, that a citywide uh, feeding ordinance uh, pertaining to gulls uh, would probably be the be um, in the city's best interest um, due to the fact that this situation that is going on right now at Washington Square is probably going to be a temporary situation. Um, the property owner there is, uh, I've spoken with him, and he is determined that next year that this will not be a, a problem on his property. He's going to take uh, the necessary non-lethal abatement uh, methods that we recommended to him to try and uh, persuade the gulls to leave that area. Uh, in doing that, uh, this flock of gulls that is um, currently residing there and other gulls around the cities uh, will be displaced from their nesting colony where they were this year, which means that they could show up on the roof of this building or some other building. And ultimately, these birds are going to go someplace else in the city, and they're going to cause another problem somewhere else. And if you limit the feeding to this one area, um, and I haven't seen the actual uh, 
feeding ban that you are proposing, but um, you know, you might solve the problem at Washington Square this year, but next year we could have the same, um, the same situation, the same time of year uh, at a different location in the city. So normally uh, in any kind of um, nuisance situation, we always, uh, the first recommendation that I normally always will make is eliminate any artificial food source. Um, and I heard that there is concern that, uh, you know, people that feed the birds in their yard uh, will, you know, uh, there could be some complications there. Um, you know, make it specific to a certain amount of gulls or um, make sure, or, or even food types or things like that. Um, and I think, I think a citywide plan is ultimately the, the what is ultimately going to happen. Um, you know, you solve the problem at Washington Square, but you know, every year you might be re revisiting the same issue. So, um, I guess questions are from anyone or do any alderman have any questions? Yeah, Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Nelson, uh, when it comes to the certain uh, non-lethal things that uh, can be done in this area, because I know we do have them, the problem at Blue Harbor, we have them at Kiwanis Park, we have them all over the city. This just is not a private issue or commercial issue. This is a city-wide problem. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that your, what type of suggestions can you give us or would you be able to give us or like um, public protection safety or um, the forestry um, uh, commission, park commission that we just formed as to how we can go about trying to not alleviate the problem. This is nature, it's always going to be there. But how, how else that we can start to, um, start to maintain and manage the population of the gulls here in the city? Okay. Uh, well, um it sounds like there are some other locations then that are already dealing with some gull um, concerns. And normally, uh, what I always will recommend before anything else is uh, non-lethal abatement techniques. And those could be uh, anything from dog harassment, um, pyrotechnics, mylar flagging. Um, there are no repellents that work very well for gulls. They um, I know that after we were at Washington Square, we had some people ask us about different repellents. Well, well, you know, maybe this would work or maybe this wouldn't work. And, you know, gulls are scavenger birds by nature, and um, most repellents work on uh, the fact that they ingest the repellent or the toxicant, and then it makes them sick and it uh, scares the other birds away. And um, it's been my experience anyways that the repellents that people have tried have not been very successful um, in dispersing gulls. Uh, in situations where gulls uh, do establish nesting colonies uh, or are beginning to establish nest colonies, it is legal to go out and remove nesting material as long as there are no eggs or juvenile birds within the nest. Uh, once there are eggs or juvenile birds in the nest, then a federal depredation permit would be needed to do any kind of management there. And if it's, um, uh, say, a city park that has, you know, 2,000 gulls that are nesting there, and there's 500 nests with eggs, what, what I would normally recommend then is obtaining a federal depredation permit, which would then allow you to either uh, remove the nests and the eggs, um, or you could also addle or oil the eggs. And um, addling or oiling the eggs basically makes the egg unviable. And what happens in that process is that the adult bird will uh, incubate a nest that is not going to hatch. And during that time when they are um, incubating that nest, their reproductive system will shut down, meaning that once they realize their nest doesn't hatch, they're past their breeding uh, time of year and they can't re-nest. Removing the nests and the eggs, the birds will try to re-nest. And um, you know, even last year, um, 
we had a situation where gulls nested at this time of year. So th they are learning to adapt. Um, if, they, uh, if they are a problem on business rooftops, which is very common uh, down in Milwaukee right now, uh, a lot of people are installing overhead wire grids over their rooftops that uh, prevent the birds from landing on their rooftops. And generally, uh, the, the two species of gulls that we deal with the most here uh, in Sheboygan, uh, Milwaukee, Green Bay, anywhere uh, in Wisconsin generally are ring-billed gulls and herring gulls. Um, the situation that's going on currently here in Sheboygan is ring-billed gulls. Um, and generally the grids uh, are different in size for the two gulls just because they're different sizes. Um, normally I always recommend just going with this, uh, a 10 foot by 10 foot uh, wire grid and that will keep out ring-billed gulls and it's small enough that it will keep herring gulls out as well. Um, so that, that would be a way to uh, kind of keep gulls out of areas that you do not want them. Um, in terms of re reducing the population or managing the population, um, egg oiling, it, you know, if you do that for several years, you will start to see a, not uh, a notable change in the size of the population in the area uh, because, you know, they aren't reproducing young every year. Um, also with gulls, uh, they don't, uh, like young that are hatched out this year will not, um, they do not breed the following year from the year that they, that they were hatched. Uh, they don't start breeding until age two. So, you know, it, you could have a thousand gulls that have hatched out here this year that are going to come back here next year and will be feeding here, but uh, they won't reproduce until next year. So, and then um, those are probably your best methods um, for uh, population management. The, the amendment before us, though, is to just do, do we consider uh, prohibiting feeding in commercial areas or citywide any area? And I would agree with Attorney McLean, Alman Ratkin, Alman Vanderwill that we may, we may be creating a bigger problem than having to come back and deal with another area that's commercial. Uh, there are a huge number of people in Sheboygan that feed birds. I'm one of them. And I have gulls coming to my house. I don't want to get ticketed because gulls are eating off my feeders. So it would create that kind of a problem uh, just practicality-wise. Uh, I, I, would, I would imagine that they would create a, more, a, more, a bigger problem than having the council come back and meet as a, as a committee uh, but through one of its committees to, to address a particular feeding area in, in the community. Uh, Alderman Retke. Thank you, Your Honor. After listening to Mr. Nelson, I would make another motion to send this back to Public Protection and Safety Committee where we can work with Mr. Nelson and get the proper information and come back with an ordinance that specifically addresses what the seagulls eat, what type of foods, and we can study the issue a little bit more. Um, so I think he's presented some information here and give us a little bit more time to work with him and, and head this problem off because that way we can figure out what types of foods we need to, uh, need to avoid and things so we can uh, educate the public much better than just saying you can't feed seagulls. There's a motion and a second to refer back to public protection and safety. Pardon me. Um, just to clarify, we're still needing to act on the amendment first before we... Alderman Ratke, before we do anything? Because that's what's on the floor right now. Is there, is there any other discussion on the amendment? Just the amendment. Alderman uh, Davis. Honorable Mayor, uh, just how broad is commercial zoning district? It, it would vary throughout the community, I would imagine. We have a com commercial zoning area in that area. It could be somewhere else in the Blue Harbor District. So it would vary, at least in my, my opinion. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I'm sorry. Would you like to address that? Well, I just say it's Steve Sokolowski's here. I, I don't have in my mind uh, where the commercial zoning districts are specifically throughout the city. I know Washington Square area and the, uh, uh, you know, the, where the Seagull droppings were causing the problem over in the car dealerships on the other side of uh, Washington Avenue, the commercial zoning district. And, and I guess um, 
I'm not sure specifically if there's other similar commercial zones throughout the city, but I think those are the main ones over in that area, and that's, that's why I referenced commercial zoning district. Mr. Sokolowski, would you like to add anything, sir? I can't give you any type of uh, formal square footage or approximate square miles or anything like that, but any, any area that you can think of that has any type of commercial development, any strip, um, you know, Calumet, South Business, 14th, Taylor, uh, Superior, you know, you just keep, it, it, all, all the corridors that you're familiar with, those are all the commercial areas in town. So, I mean, it's a, it's a substantial amount of area. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to give you uh, a square footage. Thank you, Mr. Sokolowski. Alderman Berg. Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. I guess this is a question for the wildlife specialist. Do the fledglings imprint to the hatching area, uh, given that the commercial areas typically are a little broader in terms of acreage? Sure. Uh, right now, yeah, there hasn't been uh, a real strong study that has proven it. Uh, but right now, uh, ring-billed and herring gulls, it is believed that they do imprint on uh, the area where they have been hatched out. And it is known that ring-billed gulls, in particular, will return to the same nesting location uh, year after year as long as they're able to. And um, there's a situation right now that we are, um, that we've been dealing with where uh, last year we know that uh, a colony of gulls, probably similar in size to the ones that are at Washington Square, uh, were nesting um, at a site, and um, this year um, that site was very aggressive in um, per persuading the birds to leave that area. And what happened was, is that same colony of birds is now about a city block away in distance. So they will just, they will come back and they will nest within feet of where their nest was the year before. And, you know, if you prevent them from doing that, you know, they'll move to the next closest available site. So, you know, with Washington Square, you know, right now they're in the vacant lot, um, but if they harass them out of there next year, they could be all in the shopping center or, you know, someplace five miles down the road. So. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Your Honor. I was also at Public Protection and Safety, and I understood and I was in agreement with um, the advice that Steve McLean had given us as to just keeping it restrictive to the commercial area. However, now that we have more information, and because gulls are a scavenger bird, they're not just limited to eating in their one particular area. And this makes sense that this is now more of a community issue because who's to say that the bird that you're feeding, which I've fed the birds down at the lake myself, isn't the bird flying back to that specific nest. I do like the idea um, Alderman Racky has um, proposed in sending it back to the committee, but I think we're gonna continue to revisit this issue if we don't make it a citywide ordinance because I realize that I myself am perpetuating a bigger problem because maybe through artificial feeding that their numbers are getting out of control and we can all get on the same page and find some other ways, maybe um, restricting certain types of eating and so forth. But I will support the amendment because I think that's where we'll keep coming back to this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess this seems to me that this is a problem all up and down the lakefront. And because of their habitat being developed, um, it's creating a lot of problems. And I guess I'd want to know, what are other cities along the lakefront doing with this problem? Because I know we're not the only ones having this. Sure. Well, um, I'm sure most of uh, the older people are familiar uh, with the situation that's going on in Man Manitowoc, because I, when I was here, uh, I know that some of you have spoke to them, and um, I won't get, I won't name any cities' names, uh, just because um, that's their own information, and I don't want to share that uh, without their knowledge of it. But um, other cities have done what you're doing; they've passed no feeding ordinances. Um, Another thing that I just thought of um, that they've also done is they 
in addition to no feeding ordinances, they have, uh, because these birds are scavengers, they will also say, uh, they will put in um, an ordinance on how the garbage needs to go out to the road, or you know, it has to be in a garbage can with a lid and only the day of or the night before or something like that to eliminate some of the scavenging opportunities for these birds. Um, a lot of cities will try um, pyrotechnics. Um, a lot of cities uh, will also uh, hire uh, nuisance contractors to use um, specially trained dogs to chase the gulls and get them to disperse from an area. Uh, there's also uh, propane cannons, which um, operate on, a, it's a cannon that operates basically on the same gas tank that you would have attached to your grill at home. And you can adjust those on different timers so that it goes off at timed intervals. Um, some of the drawbacks though to those uh, methods, uh, the pyrotechnics and the cannons particularly, is that they are noisy, they're loud, and um, you know, obviously you, you don't want a, a cannon going off every five minutes right next door to your house. Um, in downtown Milwaukee, they've done a lot of uh, individual property owners. Uh, the big problem is uh, gulls nesting on their rooftops. So uh, putting up grids on their rooftops seems to be the best solution um, to solving rooftop nesting problems. Um, we've also had people uh, in cities try gridding off vacant lots and putting a big grid over the whole lot, and it has worked. Uh, sometimes the, the, the most important thing to remember uh, when you're installing a grid or doing any of these non-lethal things is to make sure that you do it before the birds start nesting. Uh, preventing them from establishing the colony is the, probably the, the most key thing that you wanna do. Once they establish, uh, a colony, whether or not they've laid eggs or not, uh, you know, if they've been able to loaf there for a month, it's going to be a lot more difficult to get those birds to leave that area. So those are some of the things, you know, and there are some that are doing egg oiling. Uh, a lot of them actually do that. Uh, very few of them uh, shoot any birds, um, and generally the the communities that are able to shoot birds. Uh, are only allowed to because they've tried all of the non-lethal things that we've worked with them on and recommended and the birds um, become habituated to them or they just, you know, the, the problem's gotten too large for them. So th those are some of the options. Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a question for you. Sure. Um, the nesting area, if let's say they don't find any food within the city, Will the gulls fly 10, 15 miles to get food and come back to the nesting area? Generally, um, with gulls, normally their home range is about two square miles. Um, if there isn't food immediately in their nesting location, they will go out further until they can find it. And you know, obviously with the lake here, it's a huge resource for them, and it's a, you know, it's a natural resource for them. Um, so uh, I think, at least in Sheboygan, that you know, even if they're way out on the other side of town, you know, it's not out of the question for them to fly out to the lake. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you. Um, I guess I was thinking we have Kohler and then we have Sheboygan Falls. I was wondering if they would fly to Kohler or Sheboygan Falls, come back. If, if not feeding them here would even make a difference because we have other cities that they could go get food from. Well, um, generally, the gulls will, uh, they prefer to stay near the lake shore. And I'm sure that there are I mean, open dumpsters, uh, there's fish in the lake. Um, you know, I'm sure that, that there are a number of birds that do feed at uh, surrounding communities. Um, and really, that's kind of a, another issue is, um, yes, you know, Sheboygan's got a problem with gulls. Um, but so, you know, maybe you might solve a little bit of your problem here, but the problem's going to go to Kohler or Sheboygan Falls, like you said. And what, it, you know, might eventually happen is that um, there might have to be a management uh, strategy for 
all of the lakeshore communities. Um, but obviously that, that takes a lot of coordination and a lot of manpower and a lot of hours. Um, so um, that's where I would put that. Alderman Stephan. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess to, to sum it all up, we're talking about restricting feeding. Is that a good first step? And what's the next step? And we've got a proposal here from somebody to do pyrotechnics. You've talked about what other communities are doing, what works, and, and what should we be doing? Just feel free to tell us what you think we should be doing. Well, you know, my uh, experience so far in Sheboygan, really I've only seen the one, the one site. I haven't looked at the city as a whole, uh, where the birds uh, prefer to congregate, um, where, what places they might want to congregate. And a lot of the methods that I've uh, been speaking about are methods that are kind of universal. And what, ha what happens a lot of times when trying to formulate a management strategy is um, that if you say we try pyrotechnics over at Washington Square and they work great, you know, they might work here, but they might not work somewhere else. So someplace else that might have had success you know, with dogs, might not have success, dogs might not work here. It's kind of, uh, you know, it's a situation by situation uh, um, way of handling things. And really, um, what we normally recommend is an integrated management plan. And basically what we mean by that is using as many different techniques as uh, you can and seeing which ones work the best and what combinations. Uh, a lot of times when you're trying to disperse birds, um, normally mixing things up a lot of times, like, you know, is the best way to do things. Using pyrotechnics this week, chase them with dogs next week, or, you know, keep the birds guessing. What you want to really do is create an uncomfortable environment for the birds. And a lot of times with wildlife uh, conflicts like this, it really boils down to who's going to be the more persistent. Are the people uh, that are harassing the birds, are they going to be more persistent or are the birds? And I know that the birds are very, very persistent and a lot of times they, they went out and then, um, you know, then we get situations where, you know, we have to come in and check it out and, you know, you get situations like you have at Washington Square. Okay, thank you, sir. So would you uh, please uh, let the council know what the amendment is? Um, first we'll be voting on the amendment and the amendment is to the ordinance to replace in the first paragraph um, in any commercial zoning district with any location within the city of Sheboygan limits. So an I vote would be to change it from commercial to anywhere in the city limits. That's an I vote. That's what we'll be doing now. Okay. Um, B -Berg. I. Eber. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graff. Aye. Kittleton. Aye. Manning. Aye. Meyer. No. Montemayor. No. Radke. No. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. No. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. No. And Bauman. Aye. Um, 11 ayes, 5 noes. The amendment passes. Motion carries. Amendment passes. Now we'll vote on the uh, general ordinance as amended. Roll call. Um, there's still another motion. There's still another motion. Alderman, Alderman Ratke. My apologies, Wait. sir. You do have a motion on the floor. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted, I had liked we referred this back to the Public Protection Safety Committee so we could work closer with Mr. Nelson and investigate this a little bit further. Um, the ordinance itself says don't feed the seagulls anywhere, but there's a lot more to it, as we just heard from Mr. Nelson, so I think we should go back to committee and work with him and, and find possible more, you know, more solutions to this issue. Second. There was a motion and a second. Alderman Graff? No, Your Honor, I'm fine, thank you. Thank you. Under discussion to refer it back to committee. Want a roll call or a voice call? Voice. Voice? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 669, refer back to committee, public protection and safety. 
we will move on to wait a minute, uh, consent agenda 7 1 through 7 18. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that uh, on document 7 1 through 7 18 that all our O's be accepted and placed on file, all our C's be accepted and adopted, and we pass the resolutions and the general ordinance. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Please call the roll. Eber. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graff. Aye. I'm sorry. Um, Kittleson. Sorry. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. And Deberg. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 719 through 725 to be referred except for 722, which will, all, will be referred to Public Protection and Safety and Board of Parks and Forestry Commission. Report of officers, 726. By City Plan Commission recommending filing documents submitting a communication from the president of Vandervart Holding Company stating that they have land available to sell to the city and asking that the city would be interested in purchasing land or doing a land swap. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and, pl and place on file. Second. There's a motion section, uh, and a second to accept and file the uh, RO under discussion. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was wondering when it comes to the Van de Vaart property that if, um, if we are giving courtesy to the county board on North 23rd Street, I wish to extend the same type of uh, courtesy to Van de Vaart so that they can tell us what they, when it comes to the land swap and types of money and that, that um, we would be interested in when it comes to the police station site, et cetera. It would be a concern and a question you might want to address to the chairman of the committee whole I'll, uh, I'll bet you'd be in agreement with that okay no you can do oh, it later okay. Thank you. Thank you. any more discussion not all those in favor state aye, aye. aye. any opposed motion carries <laughs> thank you 727 by the Redevelopment Authority recommending filing resolution number 50506 relative to terminating parking privileges for Redevelopment Authority owned property at Northwood Corner of South 8th Street in Indiana. <coughs> Alderman Staffan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move the report of officers to be filed. Motion, yeah. motion to, uh, to file a report of officers and a second under discussion. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> I just want to make the, the public aware of what transpired in the redevelopment authority concerning this, this um, property. Um, the first meeting that was held was June 9th of 2005, and this is re in regards to Dave Who's End's property across the street. Dave Rapinski, he not only um, pays rent for this property on a monthly basis to the city, but he also maintains this property for about a thousand if not more annually so he takes all of and he also provides insurance liability costs so there's a lot of money that he um, puts forth to take care of that property um, the first meeting redevelopment authority because it was explained that the city would like to develop that land now um, and put out some RFPs um, the first m committee meeting that they had regarding this they were going to keep things the same because it wasn't going to hinder that process um, it was surprisingly brought back a week later to be reconsidered um, and it, I think maybe the city, we could do a better job because if it wasn't for Alderman Sagali notifying Dave Rapinski, he wouldn't have been aware of this issue. So we need to thank Alderman Sagali that that was, that was gonna impact his business and he wasn't even aware of it. Um, but surprisingly that the decision then had changed a week la later after this special committee. So I, I don't understand because we talked about fiscal responsibility and that was one of the things um, the arguments brought to the committee was that in, in comparables, it wasn't fair that Dave Rapinski was paying $100 per month for this, um, the parking privilege, when there's other um, individual business owners paying um, $25 for a stall. 
But when you incorporate the liability insurance that he pays for, the maintenance cost of filling the gravel, snow plowing, wall maintenance, it seems to be a fair, a fair assessment. Um, and now what this decision does and that the public needs to be aware of is that we just took away his privilege just to give it right back to him because now the city of Sheboygan, city, citizen taxpayers will be taking the brunt of those costs and um, providing maintenance for that land now on our tax dollars and Dave Rapinski, and it won't hinder the RFP process, and Dave Rapinski's will still be able to park there. So I'll be voting no against it. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Any further? There's a motion and a second to accept and file 727. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. no. Roll call. Please call the roll. Um, Serta? Davis? Aye. Groth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? No. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? No. D. Berg? No. And E. Berg? No. It's a tie vote. Pardon me? It is a tie vote. Aye. Motion to accept and file carries. 728 will lie over. 729 to 744 to be referred. 745 to 747 lies over. 748. 750 to be referred. Reports of committee 751 by Public Protection and Safety recommending filing communication from Carol Peterson and Bridget Gate Gahigan regarding trucks parking on Indiana Avenue from Moose Park to South 24th Street as this concern is covered by section 11836 of the Municipal Code which was passed October 204. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee. Second. There's a motion and a second to accept and adopt report, report of committee 751 under discussion. Please call the roll. <clears throat> Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Bauman, D. Berg, E. Berg, Serta, and Davis. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 752 by Public Protection and Safety recommending filing document submitting a communication from Officer Todd Preby requesting that the Common Council mm -hmm. officially recognize drug dealer free neighborhoods for the purpose of placing signs in those neighborhoods and not granting the request. <laughs> Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee. There's a motion and a second to accept and adopt report of committee 752. Okay. Alderman Berg. Thank you, Your Honor. On this document here, I cannot support this document because of all the hard work that the people from NAD have put out the last couple of years, which didn't cost the city one dime. And if we say to them now, we're not going to put up your signs, we always ask the citizens, help your law enforcement. You see anything happen, call Crime Stoppers. Call the officers. Give them help. If we say to these people tonight, we're not going to support you by letting you put up your signs, how many times are people that are going to see a crime be committed, going to call in and say, well, I'm not going to get involved. I think we got to, this council should show tonight with that we're going to support these people that put out a lot of time and effort and their own money and give them that chance to have their little glory that they got coming. So let's support these people and give them the chance to put their signs up. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I feel this Common Council uh, owes the NAD group a debt of gratitude, not only that, an apology for what has taken place, 
This group has worked so hard to make this city safe and they're, they, they're where they are today because of all their hard work. What right do we have to take that away from them by denying them placing a sign that says that this is a drug-free neighborhood? I, I truly believe that um, um, these people need to have a um, more of a, um, a recommendation and highly praised for what they have done instead of us saying no to these signs. And in the process too, if I'm able to, um, I would like to open up the floor to, I know a couple of the other NAD people would like to speak on this subject. Thank you. Is that a motion, Alderman Singali? Yes, sir, it is. Is there a second? Second. second. Under discussion? Not all in favor state aye. 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 Who would uh, like to address the council? Mr. Storm? <coughs> My name is Milton Storm and I reside at 1736 Marvin Court. <coughs> with the reason uh, controversy with the Sheboygan Press and also with this common council, it has only made our job much difficult. We talk about trying to bring back the municipal court. I attend all of the drug cases that we had, and particularly the one with uh, Guadalupe Cortez. These people have been arrested way back in February 23rd of 2004. And uh, Cortez has just been sentenced this past week. Four times the judge and the public defender have caused the, the delay. This is costing taxpayers money. And we go out diligently try to get these drug dealers and put them where they belong. And the, many of the judges' decisions are very lenient. And I think we need a municipal court right now to take away the work because these judges come in with stacks this high. And I sit there because they schedule 14 of them at 3.30. And you sit there maybe an hour before you get to your one that you really want. Uh, our NAD organization has worked hard. We have some volunteers, and I have never been to an organization that works like ours. And one thing I don't see, we don't get much recognition, because way back in January 28th, a couple of our members, Jim Bursbach, Benny Weber, and two of our aldermen and myself went to Wisconsin Rapids to get the Sir Robert Peel Award for our community policing department. I didn't see anything in the press, although John Winter took pictures and things like that. Many people don't like to work with our organization because they were worried of retaliation. And some of the neighbors also are very uh, fearful. So it takes a group that is dedicated, no nonsense, and we take care of drug dealers. So I, I really don't understand why we aren't allowed to do our job the way we want it, rather than the Common Council telling us how to do our job. I've worked with Officer Todd Preby. He's been my neighbor for a couple of years. He's an excellent one, as long as John Winter is also, and all the police officers. They all know me, and I guess I know them, and I give them Great compliments. In fact, I got many more compliments on my editorial letter on Monday than I thought I would get. Thank you very much. Thank you, yes, please. I'm Penny Weber. The address Weber. 1712 Sunnyside Avenue. 1712? In Sheboygan. Thank you. Neighbors Against Drugs is a group of volunteers that want to help people in the community eliminate drug dealing in their neighborhoods. The emphasis needs to be on the word help. It isn't just NAD volunteers doing the work. It is the people in the neighborhoods walking, working along with us to eliminate the suspected drug dealing. To date, NAD has eliminated 59 neighborhood drug dealing residences in 18 different city neighborhoods. Huge problems with drug dealing have been addressed and resolved in the neighborhoods we have declared victory from drug dealing in. The safety and well-being of the neighbors has improved after our joint efforts with the people living in the neighborhood. 
feedback we have received from the neighbors has been very positive and appreciative of our efforts. Not only that, but we have empowered these neighbors to take ownership of their neighborhood and to be vigilant about problems that arrive in the, uh, rise in the future. We have continued to receive calls from neighborhoods that have suspected drug activity beginning again. The neighbors have been educated through NAD about how to recognize this type of activity. They are not willing to tolerate drug dealing any longer, and so they call to let us know when they think it's occurring again. The process of fighting neighborhood drug dealing is an ongoing effort. The more neighborhoods that fight for the elimination of drug dealing and are successful, remove just one more neighborhood from the areas a, a prospective drug dealer can live in and sell drugs. NAD's efforts are non-confrontational. We hold the property owner responsible for abating the public nuisance of drug dealing. Our efforts have not caused the prices of drugs to increase, nor caused an increase in crime to obtain money to buy those drugs. The signs we wish to place in the victorious neighborhoods just reinforce the philosophy of drug dealing not being tolerated in the neighborhood. It reminds the neighbors of what they fought successfully for and lets prospective renters and homeowners know the neighborhood would be a good place to live in. Anyone traveling into our city will visually see a community that cares, a community that is proactive about abating neighborhood drug dealing. That's a good thing for Sheboygan. I respectfully ask the council to grant approval for the posting of NAD signs in the victorious neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yes, yes please, Joe. Yes, uh, Sue, my name is Jill Bonet, and my address is 2906 North 6th Street in Sheboygan. Thank you. I am a Master of Social Work, a State Certified Advanced Practice Social Worker. And my first question is, how many more times do we need to have um, drug expert Robert Stutman come back to this community in order to tell us what we already know? that there are serious drug, alcohol, and drug problems here, as there are basically everywhere. There are drug problems and gang problems everywhere in even the smallest of community. And to think otherwise is to not pay attention to the facts. And I think we would all agree as responsible adults here that uh, to stick your head in the sand only eventually invites trouble later on. And I think that anyone that would come into our community and see a community that is proactively addressing this would certainly be proud to say, wow, I'd like to be part of a community like that. And the main issue here tonight I'd like to reiterate is not just recognizing the hard work that all of these people that are part of Neighbors Against Drugs have done for the community of Sheboygan, but even more importantly, it is about, as Penny um, also just stated, this fine community of ours stepping up and being strong and stating truthfully that we are not going to accept this behavior in our community and we will stand up and do what's necessary in order to address it. And I would like to ask that the Common Council please consider the importance of this and certainly how uh, all of the citizens that are here tonight would make themselves personally available to any of you to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're still under discussion then. Uh, next would be Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A couple of things. These folks here, I, I truly applaud the grassroots effort to drive the drug dealers out of the community. But the issue is not what they've done. They've done great work. The issue is that their, their master, Officer Preby of the Community Policing Department, came to public protection safety some time ago. I asked questions, received no answers. He came, we came back to the committee with this uh, last week. Again, I asked questions. I did not receive answers, nor were any of these people in the room to give me the answers I'm looking for. 
We have a tight budget. Who's going to pay for putting these signs up? Who's going to maintain these signs? Who's going to take the signs down when the drug dealers move back into the neighborhoods? These are the questions I asked and couldn't get any answers from anybody, and that's why I voted no. It's not because they haven't done good work. It's because nobody was there to provide the answers I was looking for, and to this minute, I will again vote no. I mean, Officer Preby is not even here this evening, and he hasn't been at public protection safety since this came in originally, and I want answers before I'm going to change my mind. I applaud their efforts, yes. Will I help them? Yes, but I have to have answers before I can do such work. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Next, we have Alderman Bowman. I thank you, Your Honor. Gee, it's, it's, it's amazing that Jeff brought up something I was going to speak on. The, uh, the sign that Officer Ho uh, Winter is holding. You want to hold it up once more just to show everybody? Johnson. I'm sorry, Officer Winter? <laughs> Boy, am I bad tonight. Why am I saying winter? I have no clue. But anyway, it could be placed on existing signs that are already there. As a matter of fact, it, there are a lot of posts out there that, that are restricting parking, as a matter of fact, in some of these areas, where we could just hang them right on those signs. Uh, public uh, Works Committee could actually be erecting those signs at, at very little cost. And as for the showing of these signs, it could be uh, showing visitors to this community that we are not hiding drug problems, as maybe could be done in uh, other communities also, if uh, uh, they also are participating in this type of project. The uh, drug-free signs would be a welcome to this community, and I personally will vote to allow the recognition with those signs. Thank you, Alderman Bowman. Next, we have Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. I disagree with Alderman Racky. I was at that same meeting and I got plenty of answers. The report of committee number 752 states that the Public Protection and Safety Committee voted to file a communication by Officer Todd Preby requesting that the Common Council officially recognize drug dealer free neighborhoods by placing signs in those neighborhoods. The document failed by a 3-2 vote. When this document was filed, an ordinance was also filed with it. Assistant Attorney Chuck Adams drafted a good change to section 11854 regarding neighborhood signs. That ordinance is found in other matters of today's agenda, which I submitted. It's uh, document 776, if you'd like to look at it. These signs would be the same size as neighborhood watch signs, which you've seen a few times already. It'd be metal and weatherproof paint. Neighborhood Pride Inc. would pay for the approved signs and other related costs. These signs would come down if the neighborhood was declared a drug dealer neighborhood once again. If we would approve this ordinance, council would have the ultimate say in where the signs would go. If a neighborhood does not want these signs, we can step in and say, do not put them up in that neighborhood. People that I've talked to from around the state and the nation know Sheboygan has a drug problem. They know about the recent meth lab bust. They know that crack cocaine is a problem here. It's really no secret. But they also know that we have a great program called NAD, a program that brings hardworking citizens that care about the community and work together to fight the drug problem. Many other cities see the value in a program like NAD and want to implement their own. I see nothing wrong with the signs going up. I think it will tell everyone who comes to our city that we will work hard to protect our quality of life and we will not become a city of drugs and murderers. I also feel that voting down these simple signs is telling the hardworking men and women that volunteering for NAD and Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride Inc that we would care less about what they do for our city. Thank you. And also, what we need to do tonight, what I feel we need to do tonight, is vote against filing document 752, and 776 will lie over, and we can pass it at the next council. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Manor Will. Alderman Montemayor, next. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, the private citizens in NAD have been doing a yeoman's job, and I support them. And, I personally feel it's kind of a thank you to let them put up the signs. However, the, the aldermen who voted against it had valid reasons. They were very concerned about the community, and there were valid reasons about the signs, not about the work you've been doing by any means. They had very good reasons to vote as they did, and I think we do not need to apologize to them. I think we need to thank them for looking at it at a different angle. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Um, first of all, I too want to thank the NAD group for the work that they have done for this community. They have done an outstanding job working to help remove some of the drug problem that we have in the city, and I would hope that they would continue their hard work. And I'm sure with their situation is like many's. Um, I'm sure they're always looking for more people. If anybody's interested in joining them, I think they could contact Todd Preby at the police department uh, to find out when the next meeting is. Um, when, I was, when I took the job as elder person, about two days into the job, uh, Police Chief Kirk gave me some good advice and something that I keep in mind as we are at the public protection and safety meetings. He said there are going to be a lot of emotional issues that come before this committee and there are going to be two sides to every story and what you have to try to do is separate the emotion from the situation and what the impact of the situation is going to have on the entire community. And I think this is a prime example of what's going on here. I think that the, the NAD group deserves more recognition and um, I'd like to see more stories about their accomplishments in the press and in the media. However, the job of public protection and safety, you have to look at the purpose of putting up signs. We need signs to tell the motorists where the school zones are, what the speed limit is, what the parking laws are. They need to know what the street they're driving on. They need directional signs. Um, they need these things to help them be a good driver. Nobody would want somebody to accidentally hit a deaf child because they missed the deaf child sign because they were too busy reading the NAD sign. And that is what one of my concerns is, is that if we put up too many signs that are not specific that the driving public must know to be able to drive properly in the city, there are going to be too many distractions. And this is a big concern because if there's another group that were to form to help run different gangs out of town, are we going to start putting up gang-free zones? You know, are we going to start putting up graffiti-free zones? Um, if we start opening this up too much, uh, we're going to lose the focus of why we have signs in the city. And its primary reason is to educate the motorists to make sure everybody's on the same page. So that might give you a little bit of background. It's nothing personal against the NAD group. They're doing a fantastic job. Um, but that is why uh, the decision in public protection and safety came down the way it did. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I, too, respect and admire what the NAD group has done. They have done a wonderful job at community policing in our city. And I did vote no against placing the signs, but I do feel that we can honor the NAD group in a better way. Maybe we can put a plaque in a park. Maybe we can have something in the, the hallway of the, of the police station that says, this is what the, our community policing group has done. And I too feel all these signs in the city are just, it's too much clutter. Thank you. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Just for the record, Officer Preby is not here this evening. He is on vacation, and we do have representation from the police department, Lieutenant Johnson. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, after listening to the discussion that we had regarding, regarding these signs and so forth, I still liken this to our neighborhood watch signs that we have in, in many, many neighborhoods. And is that a warning to people that they shouldn't live in that neighborhood because because something bad had happened there at one point in time, or, or we have neighborhood watch units because uh, the neighborhood is bad, or is that telling them that we respect our citizens and we respect our community, and that's why we have this type of program? And the drug-free zones would be something similar to that, I, I believe, and I, I think we need to advertise, yes, we have, we have done a lot of work on, on this particular um, problem, and admit that we do have a problem, but we're working on it. And we'd like to encourage other people to, to do the same thing, and I think that's what this would do. Therefore, I will not support the RC, but I will support the, uh, the general ordinance to allow the signs to be placed. Thank you, Alderman Groth. Before I, I uh, call the vote, I, I too would just like to thank the, the NAD group for the extremely wonderful and productive work that you've done for the community. Uh, it's, it's a great example of how the community can get involved in, in matters that, that hit us hard at the heart. Uh, I will point out that I myself have absolute no tolerance for drugs. I admire what you're doing. I admire the fact that you're taking your free time to get involved in a task that, that will not only benefit us, but perhaps our future generations, our children and our grandchildren. 
I would ask the members of the Committee of Public Protection and Safety to perhaps reconsider their decision and, and vote to allow these signs to come up. And I say that because I, I truly believe that although sign, traffic signs are basic to our society, we've reached a point where droughts are, are so prevalent, they're around so much that we need to address the problem to a point where I believe that signs against drugs have become just as basic as traffic signs. And it's very important that we keep that in mind because while we can share differences, and I will say there's no need for the Public Protection and Safety Committee to apologize, just as no need for the NAT to apologize for anything. Everybody's trying to do the best job that they possibly can. But I think what we have to keep in mind is what is it that has a huge potential of destroying our society and our community and our children, and that's drugs. And I really believe that it's reached a point where signs against drugs have become just as basic as our traffic signs. I would urge the NAD group to make sure that these signs are maintained adequately so they don't become an eyesore, so they don't become a target for people who may not appreciate the signs, although admire the work that you're doing. But other than that, I think we've reached a point where signs, these signs in particular, have become basic to, uh, to our community and hopefully in the near future to our society in general. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would be willing to reconsider my vote if I may ask a question of the spokesman for the NAD group. Um, and I'll ask my questions once again that I had. First off, who's going to patrol and see to it that the drug dealers stay out of the neighborhoods? Second off, who's going to pay for the maintenance of the signs? I mean, they're going to pay to put the signs up. They'll pay DPW, that's fine. But signs do wear out, and they are red, just like stop signs are going to fade out. Who's going to pay to keep these up? I mean, I don't want a ratty looking sign up there that doesn't belong to the city. It's not our responsibility, it's theirs. Who's going to pay for it? Those are the questions I wanted to have answered and really didn't come up with a favorable answer out of anybody there. Um, Chuck Adams attempted to answer it to my, but the bad people again weren't there and neither was Officer Preby. And I would just like some answers before I would change my vote. Thank you. Would you me. like to make a motion to open the floor for the spokesman, please? Please. There's a motion to open up the floor for the one spokesman for the NAD. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Would a NAD spokesman please step up? I think the question you're asking is who is going to maintain the sign? Is that correct? All right. There is a nonprofit organization called Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride, Inc. They are the fiscal agent of Neighbors Against Drugs. We will purchase the signs and have purchased them. We will maintain the signs. There will be absolutely no cost to the city. We will take that as our obligation. Right now, Todd is our liaison with the police department. He is the one that gets that information, comes into the community policing unit, and he would be the one to make the decision to remove that sign if it was so justified. Thank you. Excuse me. Hold on, ma'am, please. Uh, Alderman Meyer, is it to address the council or there's... I would like to ask a question. Thank please you, do. Your Honor. Um, I would just, I would be willing also Alderman to Alderman Meyer, please rise, please. I'm Thanks. sorry. I would also be willing to change my vote, but I would like to request that the neighborhood that you are going to put this in, that all the people that live there are contacted and that they are willing to go along with the placement of the sign. And I do feel that there can be a better recognition of your group, and I think that's something we should look at too. We should have something better that just is for you guys, not placed in neighborhoods. Okay, so your answer, your, your question is, can we do something to get the permission of the neighborhood to place the sign? Ask the neighbors and they would like this. They I believe we can. When we do our surveys, that's how we get permission to place the yard signs. We could do something very similar to get permission to place the sign on the pole in the neighborhood. Does that answer the questions? Just hold on, ma'am, please. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Honor. Um, I didn't have a question for her. I just had a comment. Please do. Uh, on those signs, there's a phone number to call. So if the, the neighbors feel that there's drug activity, they can call that phone number, which would be Officer Preview, and then that's how, that's how they would see if there's drug, 
drugs in the neighborhood and then pull the signs. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Van Wheel. We will call the vote. I'm sorry, uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. And I apologize, I wasn't at the Public Protection Safety Committee meeting and I'm really not up to speed on this issue, but uh, there was reference to the document and other matters uh, that my assistant drafted up that would uh, authorize placement of these signs, but I, I would caution you that, uh, and I don't know what your intent is tonight on that, but that calls for the council to recognize by resolution uh, a neighborhood as actively participating in the Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride, Inc. before signs get put up. And then there's another section that the council by resolution uh, recognize that areas uh, that have been participated and declared victory against drugs as part of the uh, Neighborhoods Against Drug Program. Uh, so it would require council action before signs go up in any specific location, in my view. Uh, if, and I'm, again, I'm not sure if you're up to, uh, if, if the committee has reviewed this proposal or not, but uh, as far as placement of the signs, I think if you're going to do something like that, it's gonna be up to the council as to where they're placed and not, uh, not up to private individuals or not up to Officer Preby. Now he may may uh, come into council and request a resolution by the council saying that uh, this area is participating in the program and uh, we want to have it officially designated and have a sign posted. That, that's how it would work as I see it. Uh, wouldn't be Officer Preby doing it on his own. Wouldn't be the, uh, the private uh, grass group, grassroots organization doing it. So there would be a certain level of uh, oversight by the council. Very good point, Attorney McLean. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You got me thoroughly confused. Are you trying to tell us, Mr. McLean, if I may speak with him? Please do. Um, that each time they put a sign up in the neighborhood, they are now going to have to come back to this council and ask our permission to do it? That's what... If I could, you know. Yes, uh, Fine. Again, I'm not sure what was discussed in the committee, but I'm just, and I hadn't seen this ordinance before that's in other matters, but that's what the ordinance calls for. Just like it's the same ordinance and it, it, it's drafted the same way as the, uh, uh, the neighborhood watch program signs. Um, a resolution is adopted by the council declaring that this is a neighborhood watch sign, or a watch area, then signs can be posted. But it, it requires uh, this, this ordinance, at least, this draft ordinance, would require council resolution declaring that uh, a particular neighborhood is participating in this program before a sign would go up. Uh, basically what you're doing, you know, by placing the signs, that's sort of an official, the city is saying that this is a program area this is an area that we as a council uh, at the input of the group and uh, community policing have declared victory on and, and you post signs. You don't wanna be just willy-nilly, you know, uh, placing signs. Uh, again, that's, that's what this proposed ordinance in uh, the other matter 7-7D6 uh, would call for so that Again, uh, the council would then have control over where these signs are being posted. There's certainly nothing, uh, as it currently stands, nothing to prevent any private property owner to put, from putting the NAD signs on their yards. They, they've been doing that uh, very effectively. Uh, we're talking about official city signs here, and that's, that's why it calls for, uh, would call for council action. Alderman, thank you. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Honor. I'm going to speak on 776. That, that, that was the intention of uh, Chuck Adams because we wanted to regulate it a little bit so the council would know what's going on because some people in the committee felt that we didn't want it to get out of hand, that we didn't want signs everywhere. We wanted to regulate it as much as we could. So um, I, I feel it should stay in there. I, I agree with the ordinance. And 
And just so you know, that was our intentions. Okay. Uh, Officer Johnson, is, hold on, sir. Somebody like to make a motion to open the floor? There's, there's a motion second to open the floor for Officer Johnson. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank motion you. carries. Uh, just to make you aware, The ordinance would be written as it is. Officer Johnson, would you please, if you may, distinguish between that permanent sign and a regular cardboard sign that people can just pop in their, in their yards? This particular sign will be placed in the right, more in the right of way. It won't be on the private property. It would be on the city property. And it is to um, kind of mirror the neighborhood watch program. It's to designate an area as successful. Um, it's to reward them for claiming victory that they have uh, moved a drug dealer out. So it, it is modeled after Neighborhood Watch, and the, or that is why the ordinance mirrors, uh, mirrors the Neighborhood Watch signs. So. Hold on, sir. Alderman Stephan, do you have a question for Officer Johnson? No. Thank you, sir. Alderman Stephan. Um, perhaps my colleague Alderman Meyer stated there was another way to recognize him, and I guess I would see this when the council declares that and passes the resolution as a, a sign of victory for them. It gives them a little more PR. You know, every time we do that, that's another notch in their belt. Or forever. So we could use that, the approval of the council approving the sign as a, another success story for them. Rather than, you know, I, I do see, you know, it is maybe a little bit of red paper for us to do it every time. But on the other hand, I see it as another success story. And I, would, I also think it's important to see the sign. When I came in tonight, I had some misgivings, too, about, well, yeah, what happens if, you know, they declare, declare it drug-free and then somebody goes in there who, but the sign, you know, says, Drug dealing will not be permitted. So I think what they're saying is we've cleaned it out and we want to keep it that way. You know, it doesn't mean that if some guy comes in there and rents a place and does it again, we got to take the sign down right away to me. You know, it just says that this is an area that's committed to keeping drugs out of their area. And I, I can't applaud that. Thank you, Alderman Stephan. Sue, would you please explain, explain the vote? I will. Um, and just to make it simple, an I vote would be to not allow the signs. Um, Alderman Manny? No. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. Sigali? No. Stefan? No. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? No. Deberg? No. Eberg? No. Serta? No. Davis? No. Graf? No. Ann Kittleson? No. One eye, 15 no's. Motion fails. 753 by Public Protection and Safety recommending filing documents submitting an application for street closure for the Liars Club of Sheboygan for a broad fry street dance on August 7th, 205, and approving the request with amendments to the time of closure. Is there a motion, uh, Alderman Susha? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If we could take 754 with it, um, re recommending the filing documents submitting communication from chairperson among the summer festival. Please do, 753 okay. and 754. I'd like to make a motion to accept and adopt both our seats. There's a motion and a second to adopt 753 and 754. Any discussion? Alderman Bauman? Your Honor, can I request a, a division of the two, please? There's a vote on 754 separately. Motion to divide the question. We will act on 753. Sue, please call the roll. Meyer? Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Deberg, Eberg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. and Manny. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 754. 754. <clears throat> Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. I needed to ask questions. 
I didn't catch it before the uh, roll call. Okay. But Alderman Bowman, please do, sir. Okay. Will we null the vote for now? Sure. Okay. I apologize. Um, on 754, the reason I did ask for a division of the question is because I have questions. Um, is there a parade going on with this at all? I, I'm assuming not. <laughs> In this in this uh, event for their summer festival, or no parade, correct? Not that I'm aware of. No. Okay. Then is there a real need to restrict parking on that street? I mean, uh, as an example, after the Brat Days parade, they do allow parking on both sides of the street. Is this uh, to maybe keep? Are are they are they leasing? part of the property for parking on the property, that they want the restricted parking on the streets? These are questions I need answered. Thank you, Alderman Bauman. Alderman Susha. Thank you, your, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Um, actually, what, what they're doing is they requested a larger uh, parking area be prohibited. And what we have done is gone with the standard for that area of town as far as what is normal, because the concern was that they were trying to generate more cars into their lot that they'd probably be charging for. So we've actually made it more restrictive than what they've originally requested. Um, but to our knowledge, there's no parade. It is just uh, specifically for the festival. In the past, Alderman Bauman, the request has been made and approved for a smaller area. And I believe it's from the entrance to the baseball park up on top of the hill. And it was done to alleviate some of the congestion that occurs during a festival and also to allow people to, to move freely down and, and utilize the parking area, whereas uh, where I believe they, they charge a modest uh, fee for that. Does that answer your question, sir? Yes, Thank you. Uh, Sue, please continue. I'll, I'll, to be in fairness, I'll start the roll call over again. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Segali. Aye. Stefan. No, aye. Thank you. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Deberg, Aye. Eberg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. and Meyer. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Report of committee three by law and license committee recommending uh, 755 by law and licensing committee recommending filing documents submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30th, 06 to June 30th, 07 and denying tavern license 1240 North Bow Lanes based on the fact that they are not in compliance with the ordinance relating to the inactivity of an alcohol license and based upon their representation to the law and licensing committee that they are no longer interested in pursuing the alcohol license. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, move that we accept and adopt report of committee and deny taverns license number 1240. Second. There's a party in here present. Uh, representing uh, North Bowl Lanes, is anyone here? Chris Arrowwood? Is Chris Arrowwood here, North Bowl Lanes? No one's here, you're on. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, please call the roll. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hiddleston, aye. Manny, aye. Meyer, aye. and Montemayor. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 756 by public protection and safety recommend in filing ordinance relating to no parking anytime so as to prohibit semi-tractor trailers from parking on both sides of Indiana Avenue from, from South 17th Street to the westerly south city limits and stating that this concern is already covered by an existing ordinance which passed in October 04. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee. There's a motion to accept and adopt. And the second, Alderman Bauman. Under discussion? Yes, sir. I thank you, Your Honor. Um, this ordinance, as stated, has been in effect since October of 2004, yet virtually every single weekend lined up along Indiana Avenue, you'd find these semi-trucks, either the tractors there or the tractors and trailers, both attached and they go all the way down to the city limits. I mean, sometimes it's just jammed full of these vehicles. I mean, if this is being enforced, I don't see where it's being enforced and when. Thank you, Alderman Bowman. Alderman Ratke. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Um, to answer Alderman Baldwin's question, uh, there was an ordinance that nobody was aware of, and there was a bit of a snafu. We got to the bottom of it last week, and we have been out there posting warning tickets. I've been out with the police department checking it out. They've been dispersing. As a matter of fact, one of the trucks moved to a neighborhood just a few blocks away. We found them la I found them last night, and we're working to take care of the problem. I have Dave Beeble checking right now to see exactly how far uh, we can park the trucks down there. Um, there are some commercial areas, so we're working to get the situation straightened out. But right now, in the vicinity of Moose Park and up to about 20th Street on Indiana Avenue, there's virtually no semi parking. Been going on for the last couple of days, and those that have have gotten either warnings or tickets. So. Uh, thank you, Alderman Rackey. Alderman Susha. Thank you. Um, just to address the situation that occurred, apparently there was a change in the city clerk's office going from a computer system to, or I'm sorry, from a paper system to a computer system, and not all the police officers were trained on how to find the change in the ordinances. So several months have gone by with several ordinances that were passed by this council that not everyone was aware of. So the situation has been rectified. I understand everything has been done now on the paper side of things, and I believe perhaps there will be some future training for the police department on how to access everything on the computer because if they have laptops in the car, they should be able to access the changes that this group uh, implements. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Can I say something? Yes, uh, City Clerk Richards. No. Um, just to clarify what Alderman Susha said, um, in actuality, uh, my office, when we set up the system of people getting certified ordinances or any documents that are affected by their departments, I sent out several emails to every department head. Everybody got it. In fact, I even went to departments to show them how, and I also sent instructions on how to access this after every council meeting. So just to make it clear, everybody was aware of how to do this, and when we were not scanning because we were so short-handed, everybody got paper copies. Where they went after they went to every department, I have no control over. So I just want to make that clear that we did do what we were supposed to do. Thank you. Thank you, City Clerk Richard. The important thing here is not to look back to see who did not do what. The important thing is we have an ordinance in place. It needs to be enforced. There are steps initiated already to enforce that. When it was brought to my attention by two ladies who live in the neighborhood who had concerns about those trucks, I personally drove up there, looked at it, remembered that I had been driving by there for five years seeing those trucks, and they became part of the neighborhood. They shouldn't have been. That matter was addressed. There's an ordinance in place. It's being taken care of, and we're going to move on. Please call the roll. Okay, Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Montemayor and Racky. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion passes. 757 to be referred. 758 will lie over. 759, Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules on this resolution, please. Better. There's a motion, second, suspend the rules. Any, uh, any objection? Sorry. Please continue. Um, and then I'd like to uh, make a motion to. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'd like to make a motion to put the resolution on as passage. Okay. However, Jeff Main from the Boys and Girls Club is here, so if anyone. Second. <laughs> <laughs> There's a motion and a second to put resolution 759 upon as passage. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, if someone's here to explain it, I just want an explanation. Who? So I'll open the floor, make a motion to open the floor. To who? To To Jeff Main. Okay. There's a motion. To that gentleman. Is there a second to open the floor to the there was a second? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Please, Good evening. Sir. Jeff Main, Executive Director for Boys and Girls Club, Sheboygan County. I reside at thirty six ten Bonnie Court in Sheboygan. Um, as of Enhancement of an already popular event, the Gus Macker 3 on 3 basketball tournament on Sheboygan's Lakefront. Uh, we have proposed to have um, another event or an event in collaboration with that, and it's a, it's a helicopter ball drop, is what it is. Um, it's in, in part to, to enhance the, the event, 
We're going to have helicopter rides uh, for the citizens of Sheboygan to see Sheboygan from the sky. And at the same time, it's a, it, it is to help uh, be a fundraiser to raise some additional revenue where we're going to be um, selling these golf balls and dropping them. And then they will be uh, the closest one to a designated area will receive uh, um, the prize. Um, obviously, safety is of utmost importance to us and of concern to us. We're, we're working with um, um, an individual who does this professionally. Revolution, the name is Revolution Rotors. He's out of Pewaukee. Pewaukee, Wisconsin. His name is Kent Rice. But w when we came up with this idea, it was after the time period that when we asked request from the council to have the Gus Macker at, um, at the Lake Park. So it wasn't that we were trying to elude that fact, and it came up with that afterwards. So, so we went to what we thought were the necessary step steps to grant get granting of the approval to do this. I ta contacted Tom Holton first, first off and was told that it was okay with him, but we indeed needed to get approval from the chief of police because apparently they, the chief of police grants approval to operate low flying aircraft in the city of Sheboygan. So we did that. I made a request in writing to uh, Chief Kirk explaining what our intent was for this event and received, um, I'm not sure what it's called, a document giving us approval to a permit for low flying aircraft. Um, we thought we were on our way, ready to go, good to go. We started publicizing the event and going forward. Later found out that indeed we had approval to operate a low-flying aircraft, but there was an ordinance on the books that permitted things from being dropped out of aircraft in the city of Sheboygan. So that's what brings us here tonight, and we're asking for, um, for an, a waiver, an exemption of that. We have, do have some flyers that show what we're talking about here. We're not talking, and I'll pass these around, we're not talking a thousand feet in the air, dropping it over crowds of people. It's a designated fenced off area. He, Mr. Rice came up here for a site inspection, indicated that it was suitable for doing this type of an activity. Um, I'm not sure of the exact height, but you, as you can see on the picture, it can't be more than 50 feet that we're dropping these balls. It's more of a gimmick than it is actually, a, um, you know, that they're not going to be dropping out of the sky so to speak. So uh, we've taken all the precautions. He had, we have insurance. The city of Sheboygan is, is listed as an additional insured on that policy. And like I said, obviously safety is our number one priority, our concern, as well as the cities are. So, Thank you. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I may please ask him a please question. Do. You yes. are um, sealing off the perimeter around these because I know golf balls do bounce. Yep, it'll be on the grass. But they do bounce, but they'll be fenced off, snow fenced off, corridored off. People will not, it'll be a restricted, will be an area fenced off, yes, to answer your question. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Segali. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't have the flyer in front of me. Which, uh, which area of the park are you looking to do this in is the question I have. I, I don't have any problem with this because this ordinance looks like it's put some safeguards in the chief of police, the Department of Public Works director. I mean, those two have to give their blessing before something like this could happen in the future according to this, but I guess my question right now is wh which park, I mean, what part of the park are you dropping these? Deland because park, they do bounce. The, the area that we've identified is to the east of the community center, the open green space in Deland Park. As you know, there's quite a bit of green space in that area that would be available for to, to do this type of activity. Okay. Alderman Stefan. I'm sorry, not the east of the community center, the west of the community center. I apologize. <laughs> We're not going to drop them in the lake. <laughs> You're going to hit a lot of people there. Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, originally, when you explained it, I kind of had the concept of people were taking this slight dropping it themselves, but no. looking at the picture, it's kind of like the Ducktona thing where I just buy balls and they all get dropped at one time. And exactly. It's closer, is the winner. That's precisely it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have a question, but how many times will a helicopter be going up and down? Is this just a one-top Well, to do the ride? ball drop, it'll be a one-time shot. They will be providing rides, um, so it depends on the number of people that are interested in, per in, in riding on the helicopter. Okay, and what did um, Tom Holton say about the, the twirling of the blades and the impact it's going to have on the sand that's in the area? It'll, it's not going to be on the beach, it's going to be on the, the grass, so it, the sand won't be affected and it, I, it's not going to, I mean, it doesn't harm the, the grass. Okay, and this will be going on all day, helicopter rides? That is correct. Okay, thank you. 
Alderman Berg. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, is this one day or will it be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for the Just duration? Just Saturday. Okay. And if I understand this ordinance, this then sets precedent that allows basically any entity to run helicopter rides in the city and also do a similar drop in uh, city parks. Is that correct? Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. As far as uh, flying helicopters in the city by ordinance currently, that's prohibited except upon permit by the chief of police. That ordinance has been in place for 50 years. And the chief of police did review their request for the helicopter rides and granted permission. So the issue before you tonight is not the helicopter rides themselves, it's dropping objects from the aircraft. There's an, another ordinance that prohibits dropping objects from aircraft and this uh, exemption creates a subsection B of that section that uh, tries to narrowly tailor this activity to request from a nonprofit organization as part of a community fundraising effort sponsored by that organization. They can drop the balls if uh, it's a limited defined area of a public park approved in advance by the Director of Public Works and Engineering and uh, requires conditions that the council may set for proof of insurance and waiver of liability. Uh, it, it's an attempt to be fairly narrowly focused to allow this ball drop to be by some other organization as well would be permitted, but uh, it wouldn't allow, you know, some other activity that might, I guess this gets sort of a similar argument of seagulls, uh, feeding seagulls in a defined area. It's trying to limit uh -oh. the exemption. <laughs> they were Don't say that. Two birds with one stone or one golf ball. Uh, but uh, it's trying to limit the exemption to fairly narrow exemption. Alderman Graf was up and they'll call you, sir. Alderman. If he wanted to continue with the question, I'll leave. Okay, Alderman Berg. Uh, just a, a procedural question, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, that would there be time to give this consideration in committee, I guess, uh, and then still have action prior to the 31st? And I guess I'm wondering, given that case, why we would need suspension to act on this tonight? Uh, well, can I speak to that? The problem is, is because we've already started marketing and selling these and, you know, it's going to, a time is of essence. And we only did that because we thought we had the approval that we, it's not that we did it and thinking, well, forget it, we're just going to do it and then we'll get approval later. We thought we had that approval and we were moving forward, found out this ordinance existed. So now time is of, of essence. If we have to delay this, we only have four weeks until the, the event itself, so. Is there a follow-up, Alderman Burt, Alderman Kittleson? He answered my question. You answered it? Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> I think it sounds like fun, and um, I think the Gus Macker is one of the highlights of our city for our youth, and I think it's a, a great thing, and I'm for it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Groff? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I, I just want to say that um, I congratulate Jeff and, and the Boys and Girls Club because several years ago the city of Sheboygan used to contribute to the Boys and Girls Club um, a fairly decent sum of money and we had to tell them, I believe it was two or three years ago, that you had to find your own way to make additional income and I think this is a great way of, of doing that and, and therefore I congratulate him and the Boys and Girls Club for coming up with this uh, golf ball drop and I hope it's as successful as the um, the Daktona is in, um, in Sheboygan Falls. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Graff. Okay, thank you. Jeff. Thank you very Appreciate much. It. We will uh, call the vote on 7.59 and I'll ask for a roll call. I'll, uh, City Clerk, Richard. Um, <clears throat> Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. No. Sorry. Serta. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. and Sigali. Aye. 15 ayes, one no. Motion carries. Matters laid over, 6, 635.
RO number 103506 by City Planning Commission recommended amending the zoning map to change the use district classification for property located at 1515 Ontario Avenue. I'd ask for a motion to, to file, accept and file the, uh, the RO and pass the attached resolution. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and file the report of boss officer and pass the attached recommendation. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Not, please call the roll. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. And Stefan? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 657, resolution number 6260506 by Alderman Graf, Stefan, Montemeyer, and Susha authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 205 budget. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. That resolution, as, as well as resolution 658, which is also an authorization to transfer of appropriations in the 2005 budget, I would move that both resolutions be put upon their passage. There's a motion and a second under discussion. None. Please call the roll. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. And Susha? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. of organization. Alderman Berg. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Can I take that with 668? Please do, sir. Okay. I move that uh, both the general ordinances be put upon their passage. Second. There's a motion and a second to put 667 and 668 upon their passage. Under discussion? Not. Please call the roll. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. and Van Akron. Aye. 16 ayes. Other matters authorized by, authorized by law? 760 to 766 to be referred. We have a that will be referred to public protection and safety. That will be referred also to public protection and safety. 769 is a report of officer by the Board of Parks and Forestry Commissioners recommending that the two communications be set in place on the file. And that lies over. 770 is communication from Gina Steinhardt regarding the safety issues in the area of South 13th Street and Maryland Avenue and the possibility of getting additional street lights in the general area of Maryland Avenue, Jefferson Avenue, and South 13th Street. That will be referred to public protection and safety and public works. 771 is communication received by the mayor from Ronald Schrader requesting permission to clean up the Spanish American War Memorial on the northwest corner of Fountain Park in memory of his grandfather. Who dedicated it and the men who served with him. That will be referred to public works. 772 is a resolution authorizing entering into a shared service agreement with Sheboygan County for a shared evidence storage and property area to include an indoor pistol range to be located at the old city drop-off site at the end of South 19th Street. That will be referred to public protection and safety and city county shared services. 773 is a resolution authorizing the establishment of a policy to review the hiring of city employees effective immediately and during 2006 and eliminating the creation of new city positions. That will be referred to salary and grievances. 774 is a communication from Connie Soschel making suggestion regarding having a dog park. 
Ed will go to Board of Parks and Forestry Commission. 775 is a communication from the Wisconsin Department of Administration stating that they do not object to the final plat for the woods. And that will lie over. 776 is an ordinance repealing and recreating section 118-54 of the municipal code so as to permit and regulate neighborhood watch signs, neighborhood organization signs, and neighbors against drug signs. That will lie over. 777 is a claim from Jim and Marion uh, Lindsay on behalf of their daughter, Anna Lindsay, for alleged injuries received by Anna while she was playing on playground equipment at Cole Park. That will be referred to Special Committee on Risk Management. 778 is a resolution to authorize a transfer of appropriations in the 2005 budget. That will be referred to Finance. 779 is a resolution to authorize entering into a renewable electrical generation agreement with Alliant Energy for shared electrical savings for projects completed at the wastewater treatment plant and pump stations. And that will be referred to Finance Committee and Public Works. There's a motion to adjourn and second. All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? We stand adjourned.